Death is very real. And we will see God one day, all of us. Some die younger, some die older. We must not be afraid even of talking about death. God wanted sons and daughters. He didn't just want people saved. He wants sons and daughters because He's the Father. But the one, the only one that can break it is the one that took it on His own body. So Jesus died on the cross for our sins and our sickness and He took it upon Himself. So when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you break the curse because there is a curse. Pothole, patch up, and purpose. Death is very real. And we will see God one day, all of us. Some die younger, some die older. We must not be afraid even of talking about death. Uh, be prepared. And so I must tell you, I, I'm at the place whereby I'm sort of uh, prepared. There's a peace when I think about going home to be with the Lord. There's a peace. Uh, and I said, Lord, whatever. But God will keep me alive if I still have a purpose to fulfill on the earth. So think about purpose for a moment now. Purpose is very important. In fact, that was my message for Revo Iskanda that night. Purpose. When you and I find our purpose, that is the happiest day. Someone said before, there are two important days in your life. One is the day you were born and the other is the day you find out why. And purpose is, is powerful. And I feel like once you find the purpose for your life, you are free. Really, you are liberated. And I want all of you in this room uh, to, if you haven't found your purpose yet, to find it in God. Because I tell you, the freedom that you have when you know and you know why you are alive, why you are still breathing, and why you are here, there is a purpose, there is a God who is in control, who orchestrates and who makes things happen not by accident, somebody say amen, but by divine appointment. The plan. The plan is often called the vision and or the dream. God had a plan, also means He had a vision. And there are people here in this room, maybe you are company owners uh, and uh, maybe you lead a group of people, you must have a vision. Uh, if you don't have a plan, you plan, well, someone said before, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we don't want uh, that kind of life. We want to have a vision for our family, a vision for our, uh, you know, our business, a vision for our life, a dream. So God also has a vision and a dream. Let's move on. What is the plan? Number one, I told you this before, I'm going to repeat it back to you. God's plan is to spread His kingdom. He is enjoying himself so much up in heaven, he wanted it to, to, to spread it on this place called earth. This is a simple plan, I cannot tell you more simply, that this great God wanted to franchise. And those of you who are doing very well in your company, eh, that's also in your mind. You know why that's in your mind? Because it was also in God's mind. And you know why your mind and God's mind is almost the same? Because you are made in His image. All I'm saying is that Chinese are everywhere, Indians are everywhere. We have something in the image of God in our hearts uh, to spread, right? Because God also loves to spread. And He wanted heaven not just to be kept in heaven, but to have heaven on earth so that we can enjoy heaven. That's why Jesus says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, spread. Number two, He therefore wanted to share. He had to share His image with somebody because uh, the only person that can lead a uh, heaven on earth is a man or woman made in his image. So he shared his image, he shared his qualities with human beings. Not just with dogs and cats and, and chimpanzees, but he shared it with us. Somebody say amen. Alright, so that's the plan. The plan is to spread and to make sure, now even like McDonald's also, uh, they, 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 they want to make sure that good managers are running it. And you know, some of these early days, uh, the managers from McDonald's, you know where they had to go to? They had to go to America for training. To a university called University of Hamburger. Hamburger University. Did you, have you heard of that? So they would go to America, to the Hamburger University, and they got to get all the DNA. Because what the US uh, McDonald's wanted to do was to share their DNA. Their way to manage. Because they didn't want it the Malaysian way, the Singaporean way, the Thai way. They wanted their way. And so when managers came back, 
uh, graduated from the Hamburger University in, uh, because they're so big uh, around the world, uh, they have their own university. And so when they came back, uh, they came back not with a Malaysian identity, not with a Chinese identity, not with an Indian identity. They came, in, came back with a McDonald's way of doing it. God also has a way of doing it. And those of us who are good entrepreneurs here will always make sure there's a good manager. And God called us to be managers of the earth. But we had to have something within us. The DNA had to be of God. Everybody okay? So that we will know how to lead it according to God's way. Because if we don't have the DNA, we will lead it according to a very selfish way because human beings are quite selfish. And it came because of the fall of sin, which we'll get to. All right, let's move on. So we have spread, we have shared, and the purpose is to show His glory. As simple as that. God wanted to show Himself to the world. He wanted to show Himself how much He loves us, how He's a good Father, how He is our healer, how He's our provider. Somebody say amen. How He's our protector. He's a good God. And He wanted to show that. But not just show that by appearing. And say, I am God. I am good. Everybody will run away already. If not, bow down and act like they're dead, right? If God Himself came down. So He used God's. You and I. To represent Him. And to show the world this is the God of love. By loving people. Forgiving people because God also forgives us. Giving to people who are poor because that's what God does for us. We are also poor in many sense of the word. Sometimes we can be very rich in our pocket but poor in our mind. Rich in our bank account but poor in our hearts. Poor in character. Although you're a multi-millionaire. We can be very poor but God still gives to us. He loves us. Everybody okay? So we've got spread, we've got share, we've got show. That's the plan of God. Easy. Easy to understand. That's the next S, sin. And with that sin came separation. Now, I want to tell you something about sin. Nah. Sin from the first man and the first woman is inherited. All of us have inherited sin in our lives. Do you understand now why when you go to a doctor and you have a condition, they ask you about your parents' history? Because even in medical science, we know that we are all connected. All the way to Adam and Eve, we are connected. And because of one man's sin and one woman's sin, it has come down all the way. It's just that we don't see each other like a doctor and say, so can you tell me about your father's sin? Can you tell me about your grandfather's sin? We don't ask these kind of questions. Although, in church we do. When I pray for people, uh, when they get delivered and they get set free, they don't get set free just because it's their sin. No. Some of them will come, you know, uh, for example, like, let's say you're a guy that's filled with lust. And you don't know why you can't get over lust. You know, watch pornography every day. And then you will realize, I, I, see, my grandfather, uh, only when I found out from my grandmother, well, my grandmother's grandfather, okay, so great, great grandfather. He was a judge in China. All right? Uh, my grandmother keeps telling my eyebrows are like, you know, like the, my great grandfather, his eyebrows of judges. Eyebrows of authority, either you know, look very garang one. If I let my eyebrows grow, I will go like that. Okay, you will. No, I'm just kidding. So, and then she said he was a very, very unjust judge. You know? And I'm telling you right now, it will start to flow down in the lineage. Uh, and, uh, and you'll find, you know, someone, uh, uh, you know, gripped with lust and could not uh, overcome it and then it will come down. Uh, I, I have seen families uh, whereby, uh, okay, let's say I met someone, he says, I'm divorced. Uh, but not just me, my mom is divorced. And my uncles are divorced and my aunties are divorced. And somehow you will find that divorce is running through the family. And sometimes it could be cancer. And then, you know, my grandmother died of cancer, my father died. And, 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 and you. So somewhere along the line, God wants to come into our lives and break it. But the one the only one that can break it is the one that took it on his own body. So Jesus died on the cross for our sins and our sickness and he took it upon himself. So when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you break the curse because there is a curse that has come down even from Adam and Eve. I, I, I've, I've seen it so many times, guys. I tell you what, if I, if I spend time talking to you about it, you'll take another service. I've seen depression. 
A girl is depressed and then I realize that her mom used to have depression. I realize that her grandmother used to have depression. I realize that her great-grandmother used to have, Or sometimes it skips a generation. But it's there, the lineage. When I ask about suicide, suicide has happened more than once in this family. Or some auntie, you know, committed suicide. That it's, 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 it's very real, people. I, I, you know, I one time had high cholesterol and doctor immediately did your dad have high cholesterol? I mean, we can accept it in the clinic uh, for a doctor to ask. Uh, we can't accept it in church. When we say uh, that we are actually, we have inherited a lot of sin and sickness that we didn't even know. But Jesus came to break it all up. To break it all up and to set us free. Somebody say amen. It's important. If you have divorce in your family and it goes on and on and on and it might attack you, your marriage, I pray that today it shall be broken. I, I, didn't, I didn't set out uh, today to actually want to pray for people uh, to, to, to break bondages. Uh, and if it's a sickness, uh, if it's, um, you know, a, a bad habit, if it's uh, sexual sins, uh, you know, my dad was also, you know, when, when I, I told you all before that I was addicted to pornography when I was very young. Then only later on, I found out that my dad was actually... Uh, very uh, sexually loose in his childhood, and then you know, just so. So I know, I, I know this is very real. I just want to say to you again: Satan is very real, and so is sin. And the thing is, we are separated from God because of that. Okay, let me let me draw towards a close. Let's move on. This is the bad news. This is the pothole. The plan is that God wanted to spread, share, and show. The pothole or the bad news is that there was a Satan, there was sin, and there was separation from God. Okay, bad news. Now, let's go into the patch up. Every pothole can be patched up. Somebody say amen. Yeah, the Malaysian potholes. Have you seen the Malaysian potholes? Some places uh, I, I see on Instagram, uh, so funny, you know. They get so frustrated that the authorities are not patching up the pothole. They go and they go and plant a plant, you know? Plant a durian tree, plant a mango tree, you know, and then the tree is growing uh, and then fruiting again. You know, now it's harder for the authorities to pull up by the roots. But, you know, we get very frustrated with potholes in our lives. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus came to patch it up. To patch it up. How? How? This is the good news. This is the gospel. Number one, God sent a saviour. Somebody say amen. His name is Jesus, son of the living God. God himself came in the flesh. He had to because he had to pay for our sins. So he had to carry our body. To pay, you know like how you go to China, you can't pay in ringgit. No? You, you go to America, you can't pay in uh, baht. So when Jesus came to pay our price, he couldn't pay with God money. He had to pay with human money. He had to put on a currency, a body. A lot of people don't understand that. So God came in a human body because the human currency had to go to the cross. He had to pay with his body. His life. A lot of other people will say, why can't, why can't God just come as God and go like, I decree, I declare. He can't. Because His own law says, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. So He has to pay the price of a human sin with a human body. He had to be slashed by a whip and the stripes on His body hung to a cross. But God was in that body. And that God in that body couldn't die. The body died and took our place. It was currency spent, right? In God's wisdom. Paid. He paid the price. The Savior. And so the next S is salvation. And the way we get salvation is not just to say, oh, Jesus came, oh, Jesus came. Oh, wow, not wonderful. Wonderful for you Christians that Jesus came. No, no, no. It's for everyone. Somebody say everyone. And so to, to be able to receive salvation from a Savior is to receive Him, is to believe in Him, is to say, Jesus, I tried it my way. I tried it my way so many times. I want Your way. Help me, Lord. Help me. I humble myself. I don't want to be proud. This is not time to be proud anymore. I want to come to You, Savior. I now see that there is a plan that God had for me from the beginning. And Satan and sin spoiled it and separated me from God. But now God calls me back to become His child. Salvation must be received. It's like soap. 
Salvation is like soap. Soap next to you in the bathroom does nothing to you. Are you still with me? So, so people say, why do I need to pick up the soap? Of course you need to pick up the soap. No, but I know Jesus. I know the soap. I stand. In fact, I'm washing under the shower and the soap is with me and I think about the soap and I like the soap and the smell is good. And sometimes I touch it and rub it a little bit and smell. Ooh! Until you pick up the soap and start washing, you will never get clean. Jesus will never force you to use the soap. It is a personal decision, a free will. Pick up that soap and start to wash. And I tell you what, you will see the difference. You will smell the difference. Amen? God is good. So, salvation, what's the next one? After salvation, we become sons and daughters again. Now we are being, we're being back to square one at the beginning of the plan. God wanted sons and daughters. He didn't just want people saved. He wants sons and daughters because He's the Father. And as sons and daughters, we have His image. We have His likeness. You know, like I said before, right? In America, a lot of it happens. Not here so much in Malaysia, but you will see a person's name, right? Kenneth Chin and Sons, for example. And the reason why is because whatever I do, you know, I do with my sons. I do for my sons. And when I'm no longer here, my sons take over, right? They're proud to have their sons carry on their business. And that's why Jesus says, why do you seek me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been blessed by this video, please share this with a friend and bless them too. Do like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Wishing you all good health and God's grace and favour to be upon all of you. God bless you. See you next time.